Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today my partner John Coleman and I are speaking with Dr. Liz Lister. Hello, Dr. Liz. Hello. Dr. Liz, I have a very, very broad topic for you today. Um, I, for many years, I had ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory disease of the bowel. Not very nice at all, but thank God I'm in remission. Um, but what I learned over the years is that inflammation is a natural occurrence in our body. It's our body's way of attacking a wound, for instance. Mm -hmm. If we cut ourselves, uh, whatever it is, the microphages or something goes in there and creates heat and inflammation as a way of stopping the, the blood and, and, and healing and all of this. I'm, I'm, it's very complicated over my head. But what I learned was that inflammation itself is this double-edged sword. It's good in some cases. Our body uses it for healing. And it's bad, like ulcerative colitis. You, you don't want right. inflammation in, right. your, in your colon, believe me. So I want to ask you about inflammation because it seems to me that on the, on the whole, um, we really want to reduce inflammation in our bodies. And right. I'm not talking about fat cells. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm on the right track. Yes, yes, you are. All right, so and there's a lot of natural ways to do that. Fortunately, oh, okay. oh, good, okay. Yes, I have a little list of uh, most that we can get in food, so I thought that would might be of interest. Oh, so you're talking about anti-inflammatory foods? Not anti-inflammatory ingredients in many different foods. Exactly. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good, a natural way to keep your body in check. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I was going to say this later, but to your point of bringing up your history with the ulcerative colitis, that's actually an autoimmune inflammatory condition. And so everything that we're going to talk about now and this list that I have for you is it's important for people to be careful when they're going, if they're going to do anything that boosts immune function. Because sometimes if people have an autoimmune condition, it can actually exacerbate it and make it a little bit worse. Oh, that's good to know. So that's very important. So mostly this list that I have is anti-inflammatory. All right. Okay, so well, you you're talking about, let's say, uh, if somebody's having a problem, let's say with a joint, like a knee or something like that, would it be more like that? Not really, unless it's something like rheumatoid arthritis. So that's an example of an autoimmune. Yeah. Variation on an inflammatory process. So mostly joint pain will respond to supplements as well as other types of anti-inflammatories. But that's why I thought we could talk about some of the more natural ingredients that people can add to their diets in sure. order to help reduce inflammation overall. Okay, sure. Great. And not necessarily trying to treat an autoimmune disease. Right. Exactly. Okay. That's okay. exactly right. Yes. Good an important yeah. distinction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's all yeah. yours, so Dr. The Liz. First one, uh, uh, the first one out of the gate that a lot of people have heard of is the use of turmeric. And the ingredient that's anti inflammatory is the curcumin. All right. Now a lot of supplements these days are trying to package it up. However, it's possible to simply add the turmeric spice to your foods uh, or to teas, for example, like a tea, a hot tea. Also, it turns out that black pepper improves the digestibility and the absorption of the curcumin. So you got to make sure if you're doing it as a supplement that you're using one that uses that ingredient in addition, that combination uh, to make it uh, well absorbed into the body. So that's an interesting one. It's been studied. There's studies that have looked at curcumin in diabetes, heart disease, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, and even in cancer. And they've looked at inflammatory markers. So a lot of the ones that I have on our list for today uh, have looked, the studies 
have looked at the inflammatory markers in the setting of a variety of illnesses and shown that these ingredients can be helpful. So turmeric's the first one. Good. Okay, second is fish oil. We've talked about this one before. Yes. You both know that I'm a huge fan. I think it's very helpful. It's been studied in heart disease and in a number of circulatory settings, right? Uh, it's, it helps the flexibility of the red blood cells, so the, when they're going through the tiniest blood cells, uh, tiniest blood vessels in our bodies, uh, they travel well and transport oxygen well around the body. So that's been shown to improve brain function, uh, muscle repair after exercise, right? Wow. So it's difficult to study these kinds of supplements, by the way, in the, the way that we study a drug, right? So there's controversial, or I should say conflicting, uh, information that is out there. But again, as you both know, I am a huge fan and I stand by uh, fish oil. Yeah. You know, when people need to have a, even the mi most minor of surgeries, they say, oh, you're taking fish oil, stop taking it. Well, if the medical establishment didn't see the data that shows that it improves blood flow uh, and reduces inflammation, they, I don't think they would issue that instruction. So that's the second one. Okay. Okay. Uh, another one is ginger. 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 My husband, ginger, ginger tea. Yeah. Yes, exactly. My husband loves to take the ginger root straight from the supermarket, peel it, chop it, boil it in water, and then he'll drink that as a tea over the course of the week, usually, mm -hmm. however much he made and however long it lasts him. And it's well studied. It's been studied in diabetes, in breast cancer. Uh, this one also can show a blood thinning effect. So uh -huh. it's another one to be careful. Uh, and that, it's one of the reasons that nowadays doctors say, just stop all your supplements <laughs> before you're going to have even, even a minor procedure. So that's another one. Good. I'm making notes, by the way. Okay. So that's so, number three. So what's next? Number four is resveratrol. And these are not specifically in order, by the way, in any particular scientific order. So I'll, I'll give you these 10 uh, that I found that I think are, are really foods that we can have. So resveratrol, you're probably aware, is found in the skins of dark berries and grapes. Yes. Thus, it is in wine, okay, uh, usually in red wines because they're using the the darker skins, uh, but also in berries and other, other of these dark grapes and berries. And it's studied, it's well studied, and it is uh, studied in chronic illness, it's studied in colitis, lowers the inflammation markers, lowers triglycerides, lowers blood sugar. It's a real central supplement in the anti-aging world. Ah, mm. Mm -hmm. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people have heard of that. Obviously, it needs to be balanced. It doesn't mean that drinking too much wine is going to be helpful, because that will outweigh the benefits. Yeah, one thing I did notice, uh, 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 we do want you to get to uh, some of these others, is that people here, like I've heard of resveratrol uh, in, in advertisements, on TV, and things like that, and immediately somebody says, oh, this is going to help with such and such. And they go out and they start what appears to be overdosing on this, having no right. sense of, of the right, right amount to take. And, and most of these things, I guess, are okay in, in large doses, but some of them, you take too much of something, you could really hurt yourself. That's right. That's absolutely right. A good limit that is out there in the regular information is probably about 500 milligrams per day. Right, so that's a little, little bit of a benchmark there, uh, but that's absolutely correct. Sometimes it's hard to know uh, what is too much. Yeah. So that's true. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Okay, the next one is another one that we've talked about a lot, which is vitamin D. Yes. Vitamin D, it's fat soluble, and it's simply been well studied and shown to decrease inflammatory markers. It's been yep. studied in all kinds of different illnesses in premenstrual syndrome also, interestingly, really? mm -hmm. uh, cancer. Okay, so vitamin D, we've, we've 
said lots and lots about that. Yep, one of our favorites. All right, so it's number five. So number six, garlic. What is mm. it? Garlic. No kidding. Garlic. Garlic. Yep. Yeah. Garlic improves. It lowers inflammation markers. And it's been studied in all kinds of illnesses, in obesity and overweight, in cardiovascular disease, in cancer, diabetes, all types of different illnesses. When you look at the ingredients in garlic, oh my goodness, besides having vitamins and minerals, it has a, a, a huge list of compounds in garlic. Huh. And pretty much the only downside is if you take too much, the smell actually will be noticeable to others. <laughs> so it's good to do it. It's good to do any of these in some degree of moderation, but definitely yeah. with garlic. Before yeah, you move on to before you, you move on to the next one, coming out your pores. Yeah, I That's actually right. I, I like uh, uh, use the uh, the uh, garlic bread and things like that. Uh, but the problem for me is that uh, it would seem that. I have a metabolism or a system where it would reek out of my pores for days. In other words, you can't just brush your teeth yeah. and get a good night's sleep and everything is good. So yeah. what about something like uh, we hear about this garlic? Is that is that a, uh, a supplement where, where it doesn't have the garlic uh, uh, taste or odor associated with it? Is, is that garlic? an appropriate garlic? Oh, garlic. <laughs> Okay, I don't know that specific supplement, but I am definitely aware that there are many efforts to try to get the benefits of the garlic without that smell, right. the garlicky smell. The so it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing challenge, and it's, it's really being researched quite a bit. Good. Okay. All right. What's a little less offensive? <laughs> oh, here's a nice one. one. Number seven, bromelain, bromelain, B-R-O-M-E-L-A-I-N. -E bromelain is an enzyme and it's in pineapples. Really? Now it's been added to a number of supplements that, and what this does, it definitely helps with anti-inflammation. Again, you know, what are we hearing? We're hearing a variety of fruits and vegetables. We're hearing a variety of spices is good for our health. Yeah. So it's a it's an easy take home lesson from this, sure. uh, but definitely has been studied, definitely shown to reduce inflammation in a way that can be related to getting rid of the stickiness in the blood vessels. I always describe it as like a sticky layer. That's how I show it to patients. Okay. Uh, stickiness in the blood vessels and bromelain cleans that up, improves blood flow, and lowers inflammatory markers. Good. Good. All right. So three more that I have for us today. The next one I have is green tea extract. Oh, I've heard a lot about that. Exactly. We've heard a lot about that. And I always have to look to make sure I get the letters correct. E-G-C-G. -G. It's a, a, the abbreviation for the main antioxidant ingredient in green tea extract. The important thing for people to remember is that it can have a stimulating caffeine-like effect. The EGCG is caffeine-like in its effect. So okay. it has the antioxidant benefit, but people have to be careful uh, if they're sensitive to the caffeine effect, uh, maybe use it earlier in the day. But that's also been shown to be helpful in lowering inflammatory markers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Almost, last but not least, is vitamin C. Oh, vitamin mm. C. I'm a big a fan of vitamin time, C. Exactly. You and a lot of people for many, many decades. Uh, there doesn't seem it, it, it's, pro it's possible to overdose on it, uh, but difficult to do. Fruits and lots of fruits and vegetables, not only in citrus, uh, include uh, vitamin C. It's even given to people. It, as we know, you take it if you feel a cold. Uh, and even in the hospital, it's given to people intravenously for a variety of respiratory illnesses. Interesting. So that seems to be, so it seems to have, have that additional special effect uh, on respiratory, the respiratory system and respiratory illnesses. Now so I've heard, C. Dr. Liz, I've heard a long time ago that vitamin C isn't necessarily that easy to absorb in large doses and that you should take, um, take with it L-lysine. 
L lysine is a what? Uh, amino acid. An amino, amino acid, acid, and it helps break down the vitamin C. Does that that sound familiar? This is where it gets difficult when we want to use these as medicines. Um, so my purpose for us for this list today is what can we do with what we eat ah, okay. in so order to lower inflammation in the body. Stick because to the oranges, grapefruit. Yes, yes. And also fruits and vegetables, as long as it has bright color, red, orange, yellow, yes. green peppers, these are all good with vitamin C and they're going to be helpful. Interesting. Okay, good. Yeah. And the last one I have for us today is one that I came across that I don't personally have a lot of experience with is spirulina. Spirulina Ooh. is a blue, it's a blue green algae. It usually comes in powder form. People mix it with drinks and smoothies, that type of thing. And, uh, and it's just been shown, it's, been, it's a very strong antioxidant and it has been studied and seems to improve and lower inflammation markers. Spell it for me. S-P-I-R-U-L-I-N-A. Okay. Yes. Again, that's the one that I personally have less experience with, but I have a lot of patients who really like it. You know, I don't like people to end up taking zillions of supplements. People get what we call pill fatigue, uh, if I recommend too many supplements. Uh, but when we see that some of these ingredients are really being studied widely, really being shown to be effective, particularly in the area of reducing inflammation, which helps people feel better, think more clearly, have more energy, and avoid disease. Great. What a terrific list. Yeah. And of course, we can eat them all. We don't have to buy pills. We exactly. We vary our diet. Right. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.